Hi, and thanks for tuning in to Sweet Talk. Today we're going to be teaching you how to create a change order within on-cost estimating, and also how that change order is going to be reflected in your estimate, and how you can keep track of all the change orders you have. In this case, we're just going to start here with a finished estimate. Uh, we are looking at our project totals page for the moment. If you have a change order that you would like to add to the estimate, wherever you would like to add that change order, all you need to do is go into that category. In this case, we will choose foundation and say that we have a change order for foundation materials. There are a few ways to create change orders within an estimate. The first of which is to select the subcategory which you would like to create the change order for. Come up to the estimating tab at the top and choose to add a change order. The second option is to just right click that subcategory that you see there. Choose to add a change order there and that will do the same thing as the toolbar ribbon. And the last option is to just click this type column drop down that you'll see here that's currently labeled estimate and choose to convert this to a change order. Now when you choose that, the change order wizard will come up, which will allow you to choose the options as far as how you want the change order to be created. The first page you'll see that you have the option to either create a new change order or to add this subcategory selection to an existing change order, so you can have multiple subcategories throughout the estimate tied to a single change order. In this case, this is the first change order we have, so we only have the option to create a new one. On the next window, you'll see that you have the option to give the change order a name and a description. In this case, we can call it Foundation Materials. And no description is necessary, but you can put one here if you would like, and then choose to continue. Finally, you can select the status here for the change order, pending, accepted, or rejected. Uh, typically, it's going to be pended until the change order document is created and signed off by the client and approved. So we're gonna leave that as pending for now. The next window you'll see has the option to choose the location that you want the change order subcategory to be added in. Uh, by default, it's just going to be added to the category and subcategory location that you had chosen to create the change order from, so in this case, foundation materials. If you would like to put it in a separate subcategory or category, you can simply choose the drop-down menu to choose the category, give it a new subcategory name, or you can, like I mentioned, use the defaults to add it in the exact same location that you chose to create it. So once you've selected the location, you can continue to the last pane. Um, and here you have the option to either create another subcategory with the same name or to convert the selected subcategory into a change order. Now in this case, we're going to create another subcategory with the same name. So we will have our existing foundation material subcategory and then an additional foundation material subcategory for the change order. If we select that, you will now see that we do have a foundation material subcategory newly created that is labeled as a change order and indicated by the coloring you'll see here in the background. With the change order, you can choose to have detailed line items with costs for each, or you can choose to have a lump sum just like any other subcategory. In this case, we're going to go ahead and just give it a quantity of one and a cost of say $2,000 for the change in materials. You can see that even though we have this $2,000 as the cost for this pending change order, it has not been added to our project total yet, and it will not be until the change order has been accepted. So once the client signs off on that change order and it is officially accepted, you can choose this drop down here, mark it as accepted. It'll ask you if you would like to export it to QuickBooks, but that's a topic for another day. And then once this change order is saved to the estimate, you will now see our project totals update to 367,000. We have accepted change orders as $2,000. And our new estimate is going to be 367,000. Now, once you have a change order, you can then go review these change orders up in the estimating tab. You can see the state of the change order, the name that you gave it, the cost, and then the date it was created. You can also see a nice summary at the top for pending, accepted, or rejected change order amounts. Now, if you would like to create another change order subcategory and assign it to that job, say concrete slab materials as well, we'll just go through the same process. In this case, you will add the selection to an existing change order, the foundation materials. Continue through this. It's already been accepted, so that is the status of this subcategory as well. And we will, in this case, create another subcategory with the same name again. And this time we'll leave this subcategory detailed. Let's say that we just go in and put a $200 cost here for new item one, $500 for new item two. And now our change order amount is going to increase to 2,700 and so has our project total. Now, 
If you would like to do the other option and convert a change order or subcategory to a change order, such as this option here, uh, if you have an upgrade option or a choice for your client to make, you can certainly convert that to a change order once it's been accepted or added to the job. You can just go through the same way we had before, but then on this last step, convert it. And you will see that now this existing category, subcategory, has been converted to a change order. Now, we will go ahead and accept this as well. Save to the estimate. And we'll update our project totals and change orders. And if we go to view change orders up here on the top toolbar, you will now see that we have two separate change orders. One for foundation materials and the other for this foundation miscellaneous. And if you would like to generate some documents on those, you can come up here to our reports, go to the customer reports, and choose to either generate a change order document, which will be for an individual change order, or a change order summary, which will give you a breakdown of all of the change orders you have on the job, each subcategory and line item that's included in those, and give you the cost breakdown for each. Thank you for joining us today for our sweet talk on change orders. If you have any other questions, please tune into our other sweet talk videos or our pre-recorded webinars, or give us a call here at UDA.